are starting with the new chapter now in the unit of human physiology and we are starting with uh, locomotion and movement. First of all, let us understand the difference between these two words. Movement is shown by both plants as well as animals. And when we use this term, we are talking of any part or body part moving uh, in the form of, or we can take examples. In case of plants, when the leaves move, they are still attached to the same branch or the twig, but the movement is taking place. The plant is not moving from its location. And in case of animals, if the amoeba-like organism, unicellular organism, is at one place and it produces a pseudopodium to capture a food, then, or a vesicle is formed to capture a food, then that is not locomotion. It is simple movement. Right now, when I'm standing and talking to you, I'm moving my eyelids, my arms, fingers are moving, but my position is not changing. So unless and until the position changes, all those movements which we see, we keep in this category of movement. And when we use the word locomotion, that means there is change in position. And this is the characteristic feature of animals. So it is shown by animals only, not by plants. Plants don't move from one place to another. But some plants in which we will keep unicellular green alga like Chlamydomonas, which has flagella. So they are able to swim from one place to another. So most of the plants, they do not show locomotion except for few unicellular structures which have flagella for locomotion. Now when we come to the types of movements, types of movements, we can divide it or classify it into two categories. First is non-muscular movement. As the name tells us, non-muscular means there is no involvement of muscles. In this, we will take examples like protoplasmic movement. Protoplasmic, <coughs> sorry, protoplasmic movement. When the cytoplasm is moving in a circular form, which we also call cyclosis. So this is only the cytoplasmic streaming which is taking place for proper distribution of substances. Then pseudopodial movement. Pseudopodial movement as we see in case of these amoeba or even WBCs where these protoplasmic projections are formed. The third type, flagellar movements, where the, uh, the locomotive structure or the structure which is helping in, in this movement is flagella. And the fourth one is ciliated movement. So in this case, in these two last cases, there is a structure which is helping in this movement. But there is no involvement of muscle. And then the second category of movement would be muscular movement. Muscular movement, again, as the name tells us, here the muscles are involved. So with contraction of muscles. We will discuss this in detail a little later. But this is how we classify these uh, movements non-muscular and muscular. We will now take up the movements seen in invertebrates. Movement in some invertebrates. The first one that we are talking of is hydra. In hydra, there is no specialized muscle. So first thing, there is no special muscle cell or muscle fiber. Instead, they have some cells which have protoplasmic uh, projections which act as longitudinal muscles and some act as circular muscles. So we call those processes as longitudinal 
muscle processes and the second one are circular muscle processes. So these are extensions of those specialized epidermal cells and with the help of contraction of these muscle processes hydra shows multiple types of movements one is known as by somersault now what exactly is somersault movement hydra is a sedentary animal it is normally attached to a substratum so when it is attached to a substratum the upper end the oral end which has tentacles is like this so by the contraction of these it moves it bends like this it attaches itself with the help of its oral end that is the mouth end and detaches from the lower end so now it goes up like this and then it takes a loop so if we draw a small hydra here it is attached these are the tentacles after some time it's going to make a loop and the loop would be like this now the tentacles are here the next stage it is going to become inverted that means this end the other end detaches it becomes upside down and then it is going to bend on the other side it was straight it bends on one side the lower end detaches and now it's going to be again like this so oral end is here and it touches its lower end on the other side and in the last stage it is again going to become upright because it takes a complete circle we call it somersault movement the other one is the loop movement second is known as the loop movement in case of loop movement what is going to happen same thing it is attached like this it bends attaches with its oral end detaches from here moves ahead again becomes straight again goes here so it is moving like this this is hydra it attaches comes closer again straight attaches again come closer straight again this so it is moving in the form of loop formation and the third which we call by walking now what exactly is walking movement again hydra is attached like this it bends gets inverted and now here are the tentacles so with the help of tentacles it is walking like this and wherever it finds a suitable substratum it again becomes straight the fourth type is known as by floating now what exactly happens in floating is when hydra has to move from its position then it produces an air bubble at the lower end because of the air bubble it detaches from the substratum and floats in the water and then when it has to attach to a substratum it goes and binds there the second example that we want to take up here is of earthworm in case of earthworm longitudinal and circular muscles are present so here the locomotion or movement would take place with the help of contraction of longitudinal and circular muscles one more thing which helps earthworms to move that is seta so they also have these ct or seta which are actually pointed structures which help them anchor to the substratum the third example is of leech leeches also have circular and longitudinal muscles so here muscles help plus they have suckers so again a leech attaches to the substratum with the help of say an oral sucker pulls its body forward detaches from the oral sucker again attaches so pretty much moves in the same way so here there are suckers also which help it in the movement and locomotion the fourth type is or example that we want to discuss is of starfishes in starfish there is a special system which we call the water vascular system or which is also known as ambulacral system this is the one which helps the animal move from one place to another 
So these are various kinds of movements which help these organisms in locomotion. In case of hydra, because there are no specialized muscles, there are some special processes of the cells which help. And based on it, they can show various types of movement. Earthworms have circular longitudinal muscles, but with the help of CT also, they move. Leeches, muscles and suckers, which help them. And in case of starfishes, the water vascular system, which has two feet, or which we also know as ambulacral system. So these uh, two feet of water vascular system help these starfishes move. In the next part, we will take up the different types of muscles and then we'll come to the muscular movement and how these muscles help in movement and locomotion.